We're back. New York City Baseball, past, present, and future. Uh, one of the co-hosts, Alan Blumkin, is on assignment this evening. I'm here with Martin Rose, the other co-host and my buddy for 62 years. Hey, Ralph. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you? Very well, very well. Good. Things in Jacksonville doing all right? Your adjustment to um, to Florida yeah, going well? Yeah. Been adjusting to, uh, you know, 90 degree, 92, 93 degree days and afternoon showers and 70 something degree evenings. But, uh, you know, when, when you spend most of the day in central air conditioning, it really doesn't matter anyway, you know. Do you and Peg have um, relatives or close friends there? Um, uh, her sisters. White. Her sister moved. Her sister moved here around the same time we did, which is oh, okay. basically the so reason that we're It's good here. they're spending time together, and that's a reason to be there as opposed to. Uh, yeah, no, that was or? that was the main the main reason for coming here, so she could stay uh, near her sister, and you know. The, she has a couple of daughters as well, so, uh, yeah, we get together once in a while. Cool. And your daughters yeah. are, uh, one's down there and one's in New Jersey. Uh, well, the one that's down here is Megan. She's a registered nurse. Uh, she works at a uh, cancer treatment center down here. And wow. uh, my other daughter, Mary Kate, is uh Married to a first lieutenant in the army, and he's Fort stationed Hicks. at Fort Knox, and Fort Knox. they're living in Louisville right now. Is it Fort Dix or Fort Knox? No, Fort Knox, Kentucky. Oh, I thought you said Fort Dix the other day. No, um, no. In New Jersey, I'm thinking Fort Dix in New Jersey. Yes. They're in Kentucky. Wow. Um, yeah, Louisville. Got to be an yep. adjustment for them. They're in the south. Just uh, yeah, it's a little Walmart. different, but uh, you know she uh, she's got a job. So uh, you know when she was in New York, she was working for Turner Construction, and uh, so she got a job with a construction company in uh, Louisville, and uh, she's doing well. They're doing they're doing fine. Beautiful. So it sounds like a nice retirement, and um, yeah, very good. You know, I'm thrilled for you. It's been about Thanks. six months now. You. Um, you settled in, you get back to being the old Mert. Um, yeah. Stop okay, working that's... in January, actually. Yeah. I stopped working uh, in January, sold my house in January. Uh, we took a short-term lease in uh, North Carolina where Peggy's sister was, and then we both moved down here to the Jacksonville area in uh, in March. So. Had she yeah. planned, had you had her and her sister, Peg and her sister, planned this um, for a while, or it just came together? Uh, well, well, the reason the reason for coming to this area is that uh, uh, Peggy's sister's husband uh, works in the maritime industry, which is pretty big here in Jacksonville. So, uh, ah, didn't know that. The idea was for him to come down here to get work. And, you know, we could have gone just about anywhere, you know, hopefully we were looking for a state with no, you know, no state income tax. So, uh, you know, Florida was uh, top of the list. And, uh, you know, yeah. plus I'm only about only about five, five and a half hours from, from Barn. Uh, we're going down to visit him over uh, Labor Day weekend down in South Florida. Oh, so, that's uh, nice. Yeah, um, go see his yeah, band. Um, his band will be matter playing. Of fact, and, yeah. We're going to do a podcast from the Jackson Heights reunion. On um, if you're going to be down there, are you just going to be down there for that weekend? Or are you going to be down there on the tenth as well? Yeah, no, just for uh, just for the Labor Day weekend. So by the okay, time you well, have the uh, reunion, I'll be back here. Well, um, we're going to. Um, going to have like a call-in podcast show from the reunion. Oh, that would be great. Wow. Yeah. Very good. You and Barn can call in and um, 
and I'm going to advertise it on the site. And um, we'll get some folks to call in who can't make it for one reason or another. Um, Good. The first one I'm going to, and the timing of it is incredible, that you move from Staten Island and uh, I get back there. Unbelievable. Yeah, unfortunate. <laughs> it's like oh, the well. timing of 1969 when the Mets won it all. Let's talk a little sports here. Um, yeah. And um, we were both out of state. You out of country. Um, this, this is true. Yeah. Um, that was really unfortunate. That <laughs> More unfortunate uh, for me than for you, but, you know. Yes, no, actually, we both... <laughs> We both suffered together on that, if you remember. Um, mm -hmm. We Not that it was a little more unfortunate for you, but up until a few years ago, I had tapes of you cassettes that you and I shared going back and forth when you were over there. Oh, wow. Uh, I can't uh, put my finger on them. I can't find them. I, it's making me go crazy, go nuts, but I'm yeah. settled. I've got all my stuff in one place, and uh, as you know, and a lot of people out there probably don't know, I lived a little bit of a nomadic uh, existence. I lived in motorhomes and camper vans for the past um, uh, 22 years, <laughs> uh, for the most part. And I had much of my stuff in storage, and um, it was kind of a rent-free existence, but part of the penance was I did end up losing some stuff over the years, and those tapes um, I can't find. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I don't know where you come uh, from. What base was it again? What, where I was? Yeah. Uh, I, was I was in Nha Trang uh, in Vietnam. Uh, during during the World Series, and, and I might add Super Bowl three as well, and the moon landing, and Woodstock, all that stuff went on while I was over there, and, and uh, there. yeah, and, and it was you know, not a pleasant experience from top to bottom, um, no. not at all pleasant, and I'm not, I can't understate, I I can't overstate that enough. Um, that sucked, <laughs> and the yeah. reasons for being being over there, we were both uh, both not told two key factors by our recruiting guy for the Air Force, and me first, oh. and then you, some sergeant in Flushing, and I think you remembered his name once. Yeah, Palengayan uh, or something like that. Something yeah, like that. and basically we 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 were told the truth except for two things. Mortars, possibility of going to Vietnam, they say the Army protects the base and the Marines protect them. So yeah. you're going to well. be safe as fuck if you go to Vietnam. Right? They didn't say that. And they didn't say anything about Agent Orange. No. So <laughs> other than that... <laughs> Mrs. Lincoln, yeah. how was the play? Uh, um, yeah. Well, look, I, I can't complain. I I was at a pretty safe place. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, I worked six days a week over there on the Air Force Base. We had off on Sundays. Right right outside the main gate was what they called Beach Road, and and the beach was right across the street. A nice white sandy beach on the South China Sea. The town of Natrang was an open town. We, we we went there. We went to the restaurants down there. It was it was very safe when I was there in that particular town, in that particular place where I was. So you know, I really. Okay, but I do remember some of those cassettes vividly. Well, okay. We there had were times. We had few, we, yeah. There were times you were in a bunker. Yeah, you know, we had a few mortar attacks that we had to take shelter. Yeah, we, that that that's okay. true. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. That um, to me that says it all. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
especially yeah. when you don't know when the next mortar, mortar attack is going to come. Uh, that, that, that's true. But, okay. you know, the sirens so just, go off and you, you know, you put your gear on and you go into the uh, safer building, which was right yeah. next door. So, but whatever. Safer is the key. That's a sports show, right, Ralph, right. you know. So all I can I know. say is we had Armed Forces just, Radio back then. And I was able to listen to the World Series and the Super Bowl, and even even the the nationally uh, televised games uh, they had on the radio. And because all, you know all the games were played in the daytime back then, so right. due to the twelve hour time difference, I had to stay up all night to listen to the World Series games and the and the Super Bowl, um, because they were played in the daytime here at that, you know, uh, in, the, in the that year anyway. I don't know when they started playing all night games, but they were all day games back then. So what um, an incredible year for New York! I mean, the Jets. Yeah, Knicks, yeah, yeah. Jets. yeah. Um, it was great. Whoa, whoa, yeah. It, it came together because we had some pretty shitty teams to, to watch growing up. Um, yeah, that's true. That's true. And but uh, you know, once they got once they got Joe Namath and you know Sonny Werblin, and you knew they were serious they spent they spent money. a lot of money for John Ewart as well. Well, the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, yeah. Once they got Namath. And um, it was a wide open league. It was fun to watch. It was, it definitely was. Yep. Yeah. A lot of fun. Sad day, Met history. Um, the passing of Clarence Choo Choo Coleman. And uh, yeah, an original Met. Original Met, um, and one who played a lot of games in the second year of the Mets' existence. Now, huh. if you remember, the first year was kind of cute. We weren't particularly uh, enamored with losing because we'd, <laughs> we grew up in a city that had World Series as our birthright, and uh, all of a sudden, here's, here's the Mets. We took it the first year, but if you remember correctly, Choo Choo Coleman played a lot of catcher. I think he played over a hundred and and sixteen games at catcher. Um, caught really? all those games. Had like nine RBIs <laughs> in those games. No doubles, no triples, three home runs in a hundred plus games. Now I'm sure he wow. didn't play all of those games, you know. Come in for defense here. Um, had other immortals to compete with, like Sammy Taylor and those guys. <laughs> but um, yeah. wow, he was inept, and um, cool. but it's a name page, yeah. and uh, a name because made famous basically his his nickname Choo Choo, um, yeah. and his interviews with Ralph Kiner. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Two, two that come to mind. Uh, uh, I have two. I'm sure they're yours too. Tell one uh, of uh, two, two. And well, the, the the you know the the best one was you know the, no no question about it. Um, you know Ralph Kiner was not the greatest interviewer, and and Choo Choo Coleman wasn't the greatest speaker, so. You know, they're just kind of getting to know him, and uh, so Ralph asks Coleman, you know, what is what's his wife's name, and what does she do? And he goes, uh, her name's Mrs. Coleman, and she likes me very much. You know, says, <laughs> what do you say to that? I mean, yeah, I got yeah, 1963, 106 games. And he batted 178. There you go. Okay. There you he go. Looked it up. All right. Three homers. Uh, yep. 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 <laughs> like I say, no doubles. Absolutely 
nothing offensively. No, but no he doubles, was, no he triples. Caught, he was known for catching uh, the low ball. He was, you know, digging balls mm-hmm. out of the dirt, and Casey liked him for that. But um, that season, I guess my point is it, it brought up there's much more frustration for me as, as a Mets fan. We weren't little kids then. We were old no, enough we're, to no, we're high it. school. We were, uh, yeah. yeah. We knew Dvek when we saw Dvek yeah. <laughs> on, on the field. <laughs> and it was. Um, and the second year, that they made a key trade. I think about this um, a lot. Where I, At that year, I could have gone, I'm a Yankee fan. This is crazy. <laughs> but, because... It got old, you know. The total ineptness got old. Mm-hmm. So, um, so what? Uh, the, there was one moment when it. Oh, oh, it was after the '62 season. They traded the right-handed Bob Miller, who was really pretty good. He was he like was. a. Mm-hmm. He could start a little bit, gave you some some relief. Uh, excellent pitcher. Given that they had uh, Ed Bauda and names like that uh, to go with it, um, he was he was very good, and he was very coveted, and they traded him to the National League with a trade. They traded him within the National League to the Dodgers, and uh, they got two prospects that were. Very, very highly touted, um, Burright and Hawkness, Tim Hawkness mm. and Larry Burright, and okay. they both turned out horribly um, for one reason or another. Um, Hawkness didn't hit. Uh, Burright was erratic in the field. It was supposed right. to be some stabilization at short, and it didn't come. And... Um, Miller goes on to a pretty help the Dodgers an awful lot. Helped, I think he helped them in '63 when they went. I think it was '60. Yes, when they won in, um, they won it all in '63, and um, so that was frustrating. And that's what all memories evoked by the passing of Clarence Chuchu Coleman. May he rest in peace. And not many of those guys left. No, no. Yeah, that's 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 for sure. Well, yeah, that's a long time, long many years, Ralph. Yeah, many years. good memories, bad memories. Um, well, let's face good. it, we were in high school then, and uh, I'm retired now. So what is that? A few years have gone <laughs> by, you know. <laughs> Wow. I'm retarded, so uh, things don't change. <laughs> <laughs> and I still get a kick out of making you laugh <laughs> after all these years. So um, that's one of the one of the real highlights of my life. I'll have you know. <laughs> so um, let's talk a little current uh, Mets Yankees. I want to talk the Yankees first. Okay. First. Um, I am incredibly impressed by something that happened, um, what was it, it was Saturday morning or, um, whatever it was, the two Yankees hit back-to-back home runs. In oh, yeah, in the first at-bat. First at-bats. Back-to-back. Yeah. It was back-to-back, am I correct? Back-to-back, back-to-back, yeah, the home two, two, two. Two kids that they brought up uh, uh, hit back-to-back home runs, both in their first major league at bats. It's never happened and, before in the history. And you of, got to, of, I think you got to see if I'm not remembering, because you texted me that it had been done. I hadn't didn't see it live. I think you saw it on the Tampa station. If it, I did see it, and see here's here's the problem with. Um, well, it's not a problem, but I mean, I subscribe to the MLB baseball package. But being here in Florida, if you want to see the Marlins games or the Rays games, 
you need to subscribe to an additional local sports package, which I do, you know, which I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't see any of the Mets-Marlins games, you know. Uh, I also get the Mets station here on that package, SNY. Uh, so I get to see the Mets post-game shows and whatever they're doing on it without, of course, not the games itself because they, they don't show that. You have to have the package for that. But in any case, yeah, so so I did see that what, that happen on the uh, Tampa uh, channel, you know, the Tampa announcers. I, I would have loved to have been watching the Yankee announcers at that time, but uh, I, I did uh, – Turn on the post-game show on the radio, which I, which you can get on you know if you have a on the internet. There's a thing called Radio.com where uh, you can pick up the uh, New York a lot of New York stations on that, including uh, WFAN, which is the Yankee station. It used to be the Mets station, but they they switched a few couple of years ago. So, so I did. Uh, I was able to hear uh, the uh, post game and the the replay of the home runs. And are you familiar with John Sterling at all? Oh yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, you know, he, you he know, the, he, he partnered us up with a a really good woman announcer, who Susan Walden. Yeah, they're Susan Walden. Very comfortable. They're very she's comfortable. very good. And, yeah, and she was the first. You know, she was the first voice on WFAN when they started. Oh, no. Like, for about 20, first, I don't know, it's 28, 29 years ago. Hers first was the voice, first voice, voice the first female heard voice. When, yes, yes. First yeah, voice. I, I, yeah, when, when, the, when oh, they first came on the cool. air 28 years ago, her, her voice was the first one that was heard. But in any case, you know, John Sterling has some shtick that he does for yeah, every Randy time. Randy man, some, that kind of thing. When he, yeah, uh, yeah, he's got a nickname or he's got some kind of shtick for every single guy, you know. So, yeah, he did, he did have him ready for, uh, you know, when this guy Aaron Judge, you know, it's Judgment Day and all this stuff that he comes <laughs> up with, you know. So, but in any case. Well, Alan Blumkin hates this guy, hates him. There's well, the, look, that's you, what I love about baseball. You yeah. have preferences, and you're not right or wrong. Like, for instance, no. if, go ahead. No, I'm saying he's an entertainer, you know, more right. than – he's not – you're not going to get, like, a real descriptive account of what's happening, um, especially on the home runs. You know, every home run is – it's high and it's far and it's and it's gone. It's not like uh, did it just make it over the wall? Is it gone by 200 feet? Is it across right. the street in the lake? You don't know. It's high, it's far, it's gone every time. You know. <laughs> and on the radio, that's not so great. You know. But right. but he is entertaining. He, he is kind of fun. And whenever there's a, a, a new guy that comes to the team. Oh gee, what how what's his home run call going to be for this guy? You know, I mean, people talk about that stuff. Right. So and that's yeah. what it makes it fun, and it does make it interesting. And as I say, their by play is so comfortable. It's like they're sitting in the living room, and they really like each other. It's it's never yeah. snotty. It's never um, no, because he does yeah. all the play by play, and she does all the color. So, and and you know, she'll give the no scores, problem. and she'll give the update, remind him of stuff, and uh, I like yeah, and she I does like yeah, it. she does the on the field interviews at the end, and uh, right. and she'll she does the manager's right. report on the pregame show. Yeah, so she's yeah, she's very good. I like her. And it in any case, we're talking about the, himself. It frees him up, mm -hmm. frees it up for him to do his stick, and if that's what they do, whatever whatever keeps your interest. The guys, jo Howie and Josh on the radio, because that's what I subscribe to, is is yeah. the radio package. Um, yeah. They're, they're really good. I mean, yeah, Howie's great. Yeah, no question. Yeah. Yeah. And Josh is kind of like the the little brother kind of thing, but uh, mm -hmm. he's a voice mm -hmm. of his own. 
Howie's very good. And sometimes Howie gets a little testy with uh, when they lose, and um, he's really well, on the fact that they – not just that they lose, the way they lose. They can't buy a hit with runners in scoring yep. position. Any of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know what um, – I know. I don't know what to to give. You know, is it just one of those things? Is it uh, the hitting coach could be doing something? Um, I've long ago said, just long ago, I don't know. a couple of weeks ago, said they should clean house with Collins and pitching and the hitting coach and uh, bring up Wally and uh, Viola. Well, uh, that's and never going to happen, Viola. apparently. Apparently, Sandy Alderson does not ha- care for Wally Backman for some reason. That's 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 what I'm hearing. Every time it's brought up, people bring it up on the on the radio all the time, and the answer is it'll never happen on Sandy's watch. So, yeah. you know, now whether yeah. the pitching coach can change, I don't see why not. You know, there's been history where when they don't want to remove the manager, they pull coaches out from under them, you know. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be opposed to Viola taking over for Warden. I would not be. I mean, uh, but I, well, I, I can't blame this. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be Backman, though, that takes over for Collins if they make a change. Dickie Scott is a real favorite, the bench coach, is a real favorite of Sandy's from when he had him um as uh, a manager at Class A in Stockton. Oh, really? Sandy was back with the A's, and I was the tops guy. We we don't talk much about that or haven't. I used to be the tops guy on the West Coast where I'd go from team to team and contract mm-hmm. with players. So when they reached the big leagues, tops had their permission to use their picture on baseball cards. And it was the California League and the Northwestern League. And uh, the A's had a farm club in Stockton. Or I'm sorry, it was in Modesto at the time. They're in Stockton now mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Um, and I got to know Dickie, St- Dickie Scott back then a little bit. And he's a very nice guy. And to see him as the bench coach of the, of the Mets 25 years later is, um, is pretty mm-hmm. cool. And I don't, just by watching their language, their body language on the bench, I don't see Collins and Dickie Scott getting along all that well, communicating all that well. I don't think mm-hmm. he make, Collins makes Scott a part of it as much. Just from a few times I've, I've seen him. Um, yeah. Maybe, I maybe don't, my Collins imagination. Collins doesn't seem to talk to me. He doesn't seem to talk to many people down there. He seems to, uh, you know, obviously the pitching coach every once in a while. Um, right. He kind of, he's, well, there, there is usually somebody, somebody next to him for a lot of the time. I, I can't, I don't know who well, it is. Well, if he ever talks to the pitching coach, it would be nice if he mixed in a little slow down, look over, check him out. <laughs> See if he's running, you know. Yeah, that would help. Yeah, that would definitely help. It, might, it wouldn't hurt, you know what I'm saying? Because no. these guys run rampant o- over our catching staff. Although, um, Arnaud, not only did he have a good game the other day, uh, hitting-wise, he threw out a guy, which... Uh, he, did, he threw out a couple of guys in that series. A couple of guys, right. I was going to have a block party. Well, we'll see what happens uh, when they go back to Arizona because Arizona stole how many? 13, 14 bases in three games against them right. when they were here? That was that was a horrible week. Uh, Ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I mean, nobody stayed at first. Everybody was running. It was uh, like a merry-go-round. Well, let's talk a little positive with the Mets. we got Reyes coming back. He's already back okay. and giving a spark. Uh-huh. Right, and you got uh, Cespedes coming back, I think, Friday? Probably Friday. Thursday uh, yeah. or Friday. Right. And On the, the negative side, Wheeler could be done the way I look at it. He's going back to 
um, Dr. Andrews. Yeah, well, yeah, that's unfortunate, but look, there's no reason, you know, to push him. So, you know, spring right. training will be good enough. I mean, we didn't have him all year. So. Got some nice innings out of a kid they called up named Yasu. Um, am I pronouncing that correctly? Uh, who the guy that that uh, in re, that they pitched in relief? Yeah. Uh, called, uh, you know, you, you know uh, is his name. Y N O A. Yeah, right. Well, you changed the He's letters. The one, it makes such a big difference, you know. Yeah, he got one of the things he about, got, that you learned. One of the things that you learned from um, at PS 148 uh, from Miss Ross, you learned to read. It made all the difference in your life. <laughs> I have always been so envious of that. It was I was absent a lot. It was great. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, that does change the, the name, the pronunciation considerably, and uh, he did give good innings. And uh, Cabrera's coming back, which is right. nice. He was in a hitting slump, but these guys are so streaky. Walker, Cabrera, up and down, and um, uh, Mays was streaky too. So you can't. Um, yeah. It's what. Well, look, we haven't we haven't had we haven't had uh, Cespedes and uh, Bruce, Bruce in the lineup in a, together. Right. What, what, what was it? One game, and he went down or something. Right. So right. when they're in the lineup back to back. Um, and all of a sudden you got, you know, uh, Reyes and Grandy and Cespedes and Bruce and Walker. Yes, the Asus. The Asus. The Asus. That's not the a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And you can go get him in center field. I like that. Um, I think it's, at this point, it's got to be a sign of strength that they sent Conforto down, that they're able to let him play and, um, Maybe get a stroke back. I, that's a real enigma. I thought he was um, really headed on an upward spiral last year, and um, it's gone south. Yeah. Well, you know, they were saying he got pull happy, but it just could be that the league uh, caught up to him too. You know, there's right. the scouting reports get around, and um, uh, you know, they he he did move up rather quickly last year. Um, yes, you know, I he I don't think he was in Triple A at all. Wasn't he called up from Double A last year? I'm pretty I sure he been. was. Yeah, I think I think he right, went right from Binghamton uh, to, to New York. So uh, you know, he, he, so this year at least he got to spend some time in uh, in Triple A. So right. well, you know, and we'll and this will be his second time in Triple A. Yeah, yeah. I don't know much about this um, this kid that they put at third base uh, that they just brought up. He actually got a double the other day and drove in two runs. Versatile um, guy, too. Yeah, T.J. Uh, uh, Rivera. T.J. Rivera, yeah. He was hitting 349 in Las Vegas. I, I, I understand that's a, a hitter's league, but... You know, it's still 349. So. Anywhere, anywhere you hit 349, you're making some contact and yeah, uh, yeah, so. nice. Um, yeah. Anything on tap that you could look for? This oh, so I wanted to talk about the Yankees. They are um, building in the in the proper way. I mean, they just looks they like did they it rather the farm rather system was so built yeah. up. They got so much talent for what they gave up, for giving up yep. Miller and, and giving up Chapman. Um, mm -hmm. They're on, on an Beltran. upward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Beltran as well. And Beltran they got one problem. Got ball. They got one problem. No starting pitching. <laughs> That's a little bit of a problem. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that is a problem. Well, outside, you know, they got Tanaka. And you know Pineda's been pretty good. He early in the season he was having trouble in the first inning, but it looks like he's gotten past that. He's been he's been pretty good. Uh, you have any thoughts on A Rod? His overall career? Or... 
And, you know, what can you say? I mean, the guy was one of the most talented players in history. He was. Yeah. Uh, now, Gita what would have happened? Have I asked him that question last night, and he said he, he's probably the best shortstop that ever lived. If you start uh, with probably who, so. Who could you name? Ernie Banks? Um, Honus Wagner? All the well, I, what's that? This guy. Yeah. No, I could very well um, be. Mm-hmm. And if you take the PED thing, the scandals and all that, you realize that each generation is playing against each other and that you can't, we can no longer compare an Ernie Banks um, to, uh, to a um, Rodriguez, but we can compare Rodriguez to everybody else in his generation. And uh, I think only only Barry Bonds is really, of the, this generation is the only guy I could say is a better all-around player than, uh, mm-hmm. than Rodriguez. Uh, probably they, so. The guys yeah. like Griffey, uh, they certainly come into the equation, but... Like him yeah, or dislike no, I, him? I mean, um, no, you can't well, take anything away. Uh, yeah. The guy was the guy was great, and um, uh, they're saying that he's not, in all likelihood, not going to play the rest of this year, um, from what I heard today. Uh, really? Because I thought Miami want, was coming knocking at his Yeah, door. but uh, from what I heard today, he wants to just, take the rest of the year off and be with his family and whatnot. But, you know, if you're sitting there with 696 home runs, um, you know, maybe if he gets himself into shape, maybe he can catch on somewhere, uh, you know, next year uh, as a DH. I mean, my, my, he can't play the field, really. What if Even if he went to Miami after they – uh, expand the rosters. Um, all would be would, would be a pinch hitter. So you know, I I'm pretty sure from what I heard today that the, you know the statement didn't come from him, but it was you know somebody on one of his representatives or or somebody in the know saying that he wants to uh, pretty much you know just be be a family guy the rest of this year. And then you know, nothing, nothing is certain for next season. I guess you want to see if he gets any offers or, or how he feels over the winter. Yeah, well, you got to wish him the best on some level. I still remember him on the cover of Baseball America when he just signed. He was like this, same as he is now. Like, he's an icon, really. I mean, he. He was so highly touted, and there was so much pressure on him. And oh, yeah. um, it's very interesting to see see the uh, a guy's career literally start and end before your very uh, very eyes. And the years go so quickly. It's as you know, it's really yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could have been a dog. Right, Mark, too. I enjoyed this one very very much. I um, will say this, implore you to hang in there and implore our listening audience to do the same and to keep on keeping on. We'll catch you next week, same bad station. Okay, see you next week. All right, Mert. Have a great one. Good night. Bye. Bye, everybody. Enjoy and good luck.